gaming community out here on what everyone's building. You know, there's been so many great you know, movements in Solana gaming. Love to see it. All these great builders out here. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, let's just go ahead and get started. Don't want to take too much time. Uh, Michael, you know, you want to just go back over to what we were talking about before the rug. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I guess first and foremost, let me just mention that we do have a really big week going on right now. Um, this was entirely uh, produced and, and um, prepared by our community team. It is a week that focuses exclusively on our community. It's a number of different events. It's award ceremonies. It's uh, a town hall that I'll be co-hosting tomorrow, but we have what we call our Joni Awards. Uh, this is recognizing members across our community we also have um, uh, COPA, the Council of Peace Assembly. This is focused on guilds or what we call DAX within our ecosystem. That's taking place on Thursday. Um, I'll kind of go through this quickly, but this is an entire week that is dedicated to the Star Atlas community. We had a very quick session this morning, uh, 45 minutes explaining what was going on. We had 450, 460 people show up to our Discord just to listen on that. So uh, we do have this incredibly strong, passionate community. And maybe to address your, your, you know, your comment, it feels like, hey, where's Star Atlas been? We haven't really heard too much about Star Atlas. Um, and while that's not necessarily from or by design, it is uh, kind of out of necessity, I would say, through time. I think what I was just getting into as we uh, as we got cut off there so rudely and abruptly by X um, on this space itself is that, you know, we've everyone up here on this panel, uh, all of the builders have likely gone through a very challenging couple of years. You know, 2022 wasn't that great, 2023 uh, arguably even worse, and we just start, started to see uh, this kind of re-emergence of not only Solana, but the gaming narrative, I would say, especially um, around the time of Breakpoint. So this was uh, October of last year, and uh, Star Atlas had a presence there. We we had a, a great showcasing of all of the things that are up and coming for ourselves. So to, to try to bring in new people, <laughs> uh, recognize all of the legacy followers, recognize the Star Atlas community, I will just mention, uh, and to your point, that there are a number of ways to engage in Star Atlas today. Now, our building philosophy encompasses a number of different environments that we deploy across. Uh, that means we're building a product line that is Unreal Engine. That's our flagship AAA space exploration MMO. Uh, we have a number of features and releases up and coming on that. I would actually encourage anyone here that's really interested digging into all of this stuff to join us in our Discord tomorrow because I am running through all of the leaks, all of the sneak peeks, everything that's up and coming for the year for Star Atlas in that town hall. So rather than do it all here, I'll just mention that. But um, outside of our, our Unreal Engine product line, we currently have a browser-based product line we call Sage, uh, Star Atlas Golden Era. This is where a lot of our fully on-chain gaming logic lives. Um, uh, we have some 13 programs, uh, on-chain programs deployed that control everything from movement, coordinates, uh, mining, extraction, crafting, inventory systems, ultimately combat systems, localized inventory, marketplace, etc. All of these game functions are executed directly on-chain. You know, making up 10 to 15 percent of Solana's total network transaction volume on a daily basis with a relatively small user base. Um, and then we have a mobile line and our mobile line is a, a move to earn kind of segment spin to the move to earn segment of the industry. In our case, this will be a uh, character progression application. So fitness app, walk, run, bicycle ride. Uh, with a crew member slotted into your mobile phone. And as you complete these activities, you actually level up your, your uh, crew members. Now, last point I'll make here before just wrapping all of this up is that we really think of all of these applications or these environments not as separate or independent or siloed product verticals, but rather part of a cohesive and interconnected Star Atlas universe. Uh, a big component of why we're building all of our logic on chain is because we have composability across all of these different front ends. So, uh, for example, if you're leveling up your crew member in the mobile application, you can take that crew member and slot it into your ship for combat racing in the Unreal Engine client or slot it into a ship through sh ship configuration in, uh, in Sage in the browser application. And likewise, 
the components that you're crafting or resources that you're extracting from Sage, uh, whether it be raw resources or say converting hydrogen into fuel, you're able to take that fuel and then sell that to players as an SFT uh, and commodity, sell that to players who need fuel, ammunition, toolkits, crew members, etc. for uh, the competitive combat racing gameplay loops that are coming up. Super busy year for us. Let me pause here and uh, turn the stage over, but super excited for this year. Yes. So basically, you guys, sounds like a lot of big updates. And if you want to put any of those updates, uh, you know, from your Twitter or anything up in the comments, just so everyone can see, please let us know. You know, from our end on Star Atlas, you know, we've been finding many ways to just have fun, check out the gameplay. Also, you know, there's actually some cool ways to earn, which we can cover later on. But now also we, we have... No, Ryan Ever from BR1. I know you guys have a lot coming up, so you know, happy to share that with, uh, you know, you know, please share with everyone out here for the Solana Gaming Space. My pleasure to be here, and uh, Michael, it's always a pleasure. You know I'm a huge fan of everything that you guys do. The Star Atlas universe is unparalleled. Um, always you might be radio silent, but I'd like to also say, click that little button down below retweet like comment the space we're giving away some solana nfts to any to everyone engaging uh share the space please and br1 take it away i just want to confirm can you, can you hear me all right all right all right i love it again doubling down mike i appreciate you it's always exciting to to share the stage with you what's up folks my name is evan ryer you may know me on social media as ryan ever i'm the ceo and co-founder here at br1 infinite for those of you that are unfamiliar with our game, we're the world's first risk-based shooter. We produce a shooting game very much like PUBG, where you pay a bit of money to spawn, and for every player you eliminate, you earn real cash. We have different servers, 10 cent risk mode, 25 cent, a dollar, free servers, private matches. Using the one dollar game mode as the example, you pay one dollar to spawn, and for every player you kill, you guessed it, you earn a dollar USD, and we take a percentage of all player earnings. It's been a, a big year for us. Even, you know, last year, we, we crossed some major milestones, and I'm really proud to say today, we have just over 120,000 users registered to BR1 Infinite. This month, we push a, actually, well, next month, the month of March, we push a major update, including huge corrections to to player movement, our character controls, some major map improvements, and as well, our new weapon skins in the game. We've always been passionate about designing for the athlete, the audience member, the content creator, and the game investor. We, we recognize very much that not everyone in this audience today could play BR1 Infinite, but it's important that we design functions that could get them involved. I'm a core gamer, but I don't have time to play video games, and that's why designing for these four profiles of gamers is so important. David, you've been a longtime supporter of us, and so has the Gen Legends team. Really excited to get you signed up for our team-based functions, where you're going to be able to onboard more athletes, participate in an active rev share of the earnings they generate in the game, and actually stake their entries in the game itself. It's going to be a, a big Q2. Yeah, well, I'm pumped. And like, do you guys have any uh, launches upcoming uh, that we should know about? Well, with the release of our team-based functionality and rental systems, really we're, we're concentrating on functionality for this is Web3 users. So for those of you that can't play the game, why own BR1 NFTs, our characters and weapon skins? Well, these characters and weapon skins are finite and they come with an earnings bonus. That means each character and weapon skin can give you a 1% to 10% earnings bonus in the game. A 10% earnings bonus means you make 10 cents more on every dollar. For an esports athlete playing BR1 Infinite, this is a substantial increase in your ROI. Imagine you're playing in the, the, the $1 game mode. You're making 15% more on every dollar if you have that 15% earnings bonus. You achieve this by equipping a character and multiple weapon skins. We release these associated rental systems as well as our new weapon skins through our, our loot box collection on March 7th. So on, on March 7th, we have our, our mint for the BR1 loot box. Mint one box, and it will open to reveal three weapons. Use them to fuel your gameplay, that of your teams, or stake them in the rental system and generate passive rewards in the form of USD. Yeah, 
Yo, awesome. So yeah, basically, guys, BR1, uh, I know they're allowed to a rental system, which I think will give a lot more reason to hold their assets because you can rent them out to professional athletes. Now we got people just find a cracked FPS player and start printing money that way. Um, you know, if, in case you're not an FPS gamer yourself like myself. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll cover that. We'll, we'll get back to that now. We also have Pavel. Pa- pa- I- Pavel, Pavel. We also have Pavel from Mixmob. Uh, you know, I know Mixmob just recently launched their Mixbots, launched their MXM token. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually kept up. And you know, can give us an update on what you guys are doing over at Mixmob. Yo, yo, yo! How's everybody doing? Um, things are going awesome. We so for those that don't know, uh, be, uh, I'm in Mixmob. It is it's Mario Kart. Gameplay is Mario Kart with Hearthstone. So it's a card racer with strategy, uh, with a racing game with card strategy. That's how you build and you win. Now, the real thing for Web3 or Crypto Natives, it's Mario Kart with gambling and DeFi. Uh, similar to the BR1 team who I met a year and a half ago at Solana Breakpoint in Lisbon, which is awesome checking out their demos. Uh, similar to that, like we have three types of game players. We have uh, three types of players. You have the gamer, person who wants to come in, and just play, and every time you race, you pay an entry fee, uh, just like it's a poker table. Every time you race and you win, you get money back. The earnings come back to you. you. Lose too many times, you're kicked off the table. You gotta pay an entry fee to ante up again. Then you've got the sports better, so we call the gamer, the gambler. And what the gambler is, somebody like me, I just want a sports bet, I, see, I tune in, I see two people about to race, I see their on-chain stats, and I play some money in. Now the winners of that race also get a percentage of that prize pool. And then you've got the D-Gen. So you've got the gamer, the gambler, the D-Gen. The D-Gen are the DeFi guys who we turned our racing arenas into liquidity pools. And if you stake in a certain racing arena and they have different game modes, you'll get the rewards from there, just like uh, if people are familiar with the GMX, the Perfect on Arbitrum. So that's how you get paid out. And then there's a lot of dynamically adjusted yield. There's optimization so people can front run and figure out which arena is going to give the most payouts. So you target at three different people. And tying it back to Solana, what's cool is you couldn't do this on any other chain. Like if you're a DGen in our game and you're flipping from one arena to another and trying to optimize, the costs are so low that makes it worthwhile to do it. You couldn't do that on anything else. Um, just like you guys said, we recently just launched our token, uh, the MXWAB token, the MXM, last month on Bybit and KuCoin. Everything's going really well. And really what everybody's getting ready for now is people have been playing in a closed beta um, I mean, oh, well, kind of partially open beta, playing a lot of features aren't in, but they're generating revenue. We're selling the in-game tokens, the, the characters that you can use in the game, the strategy. So everybody is gearing up. And then what's going to happen is Q2 is everybody just waiting for is the full mobile game release. And that's going to be like the official launch where everybody can download this onto their phone, be on a train. They got two, three minutes to spare. Let me jump in the mix mob. Let me race somebody and win some money. Yo, yeah, so basically, you guys know Mixmob is um, a skill based strategy racing game, and they actually have very, very similar tokenomics to Photo Finish. You know, people, they buy their in game currency, which is Suds, which is equivalent of Photo Finish's Derby, um, and then you can stake the MXM token for a percentage of all their earnings in their account. Now, you know, one, one thing that I've really loved about Photo Finish for their user acquisition strategy is the fact that they you know are giving out crown gifts right now to onboard people to the game so people can come learn it without feeling depressed from too many losses because now you're getting subsidized and now you know you're like okay now i can figure out this game while i'm doing it you know pavel is that something that mix mob is interested in doing or you guys have any idea uh, plans to do something like that Oh no, Pavel! I think I think Pavel might might have rugged. But all right, all right, all right. Well, anyways, while we wait for Pavel to get back on stage, lastly but not least, we have you know we have you know photo finishes founder Ian Cummings. Man, like this guy is an absolute monster. And you know what? I gotta shout out everyone out here on this stage, right? Like all these projects out here have been around for over two years. Literally building through the hardest of times, through the bear market, uh, Star Alice, BR1, Photo Finish, Mixed Mob, and now you can finally see 
you know, the work that they put in. You know, shout out to these federal Finnish guys. These guys are absolutely leading the space right now. And, you know, I don't, I don't really see any stopping point. They have one of the best games I've ever played. Um, they just recently hit all-time high, so congratulations. I accidentally made the mistake of saying if Crown hits $1.5, I will be donating my one-of-one one to the Dijon Legends DAO. Like, that was just way too low. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, guys, without further ado, we got Ian Cummings up here. What is up? You know, you want to give us some updates on Photo Finish and you know, just anything we should know. Yeah. Wow, great intro. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, our goal is to make people less depressed. Like you said, that's really the overall goal of the entire game. Less depression. Uh, really, it's it's a horse racing game. It's, uh, you know, owning a horse, breeding, racing, all in a real money ecosystem. And the whole life cycle is there. So players are dealing with a horse that's aging and getting older, and maybe he gets worse. But the whole point is to really uh, just kind of live that fantasy of being a horse owner and we are partnered with NBC Sports and the Kentucky Derby. And so there's sort of a lot of that realism angle. Try and live out that fantasy of, of winning the Kentucky Derby. You never could have done it in real life. We all know all of us are never going to have a shot to walk into the winner's circle at Churchill Downs. But in a virtual world, maybe you can. So that's really what it's started as. That's been the vision. And yeah, we've been growing low and slow. For yeah, two years now. So it's great to finally see everyone kind of catching on. Um, but at the same time, I'm uh, really proud and happy for our holders that really believed in us this whole time and, and have built such a strong and amazing community. I mean, that's really what it's been about for us for sure lately. Yeah, I mean, no, thanks for coming on the space. And no, just for everyone in the audience, be sure to give all these great founders a follow. I mean, these guys are really cooking out for Solana, for Solana Gaming. Um, and, you know, one thing I would like to highlight about Photo Finish, guys, is this is a zero-sum skill-based game. So there's not really ponzi -nomics. I know a lot of people uh, might have some PTSD, especially in Web3 Gaming, from games like Pegaxi and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I actually created a video today, which I posted up in the comments, for anyone interested in starting Photo Finish today. You know, just some tools and tips on how to get started because, you know, when I first started the game, it was definitely a little overwhelming. So I hope, you know, I could break it down for you guys, um, really get you onboarded because, you know, right now you're literally getting paid to play. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, if you watch the video, you guys will see, but we, we, we can cover that more um, later. Now, let's just head back um, to, you know, let, let's just head back to, you know, uh, Michael from the Star Atlas. Um, no, just anything else that we, we want to cover before we just dive in. We're going to bring up some experts on the space for them to give their own feedback on their games. Now, we have Valacy, he's deep in Star Atlas 64, well, deep in Mixed Mob. Now, we, we do need some BR1 and photo finish experts, though, if anyone wants to come up and speak as well. Well, you know what I think is is probably worth covering. You had mentioned uh, that there are different ways that you can play and earn right now, and in fact, you know that has actually been true going all the way back to December of two thousand and twenty one. Now, how you categorize play or play to earn in the actual specific gameplay mechanics, you know that's maybe up for debate. But our very first um, DAP that we rolled out was something that we called Faction Fleet. And it was very basic. It was, you know, management of these four individual resources, food, fuel, ammunition, and toolkits. Um, and you would effectively enlist your ship or fleet of ships with your faction that you've selected. And to the extent that you were managing those resources, then you were just earning more passively earning Atlas. Um, now we've completely reinvented the economic model and, and really what it means to be participating in the Star Atlas economy with the release of uh, what we call Sage Labs, uh, kind of a long backstory there. But um, uh, simply put, Labs was really born out of our own internal test environment for building out these fully on-chain gameplay mechanics. And I mean, it was pretty rough around the edges. And what we ultimately decided as we got into the second half of 2023, again, considering kind of the state of the market, state of the economy, state of us as a, as a company and studio, was that 
it made sense for us to roll out a product that was very much um, early stage MVP that could activate uh, that sense of economy in the game. And what Sage is all about, and, and by the way, I should probably clarify, Sage is really more of a top-down, real-time strategy style of game, whereas our MMO very much gets deep into the detail, um, you know, between first person and third person, but within Unreal Engine, extremely high quality, the ability to get into and explore the interiors of ships, the bathrooms and the bedrooms and the cockpit, um, uh, and otherwise get deeply intimate with this asset that you own. But, um, uh, otherwise contextualized in all of the different things that you can do in a grand strategy space exploration MMO that would include, you know, space exploration, territory control, uh, political domination, territorial conquest, bounty hunting, uh, data running, um, you know, any number of career paths. That's all the MMO. And then again, where we have this economy activated today is in uh, this game that we call Sage Labs. And and it's really simple. It's like really basic looking at the surface level. It's 2D, it's a lot of menus, uh, and it is directly in browser. Uh, and really the core gameplay modality today, it just focuses on going out and extracting resources from different star bases or celestial bodies around this persistent um, uh, persistent map that will ultimately become you know, one of the galaxies within the Star Atlas universe and, and uh, but you're extracting resources, you're crafting items, and right now you're crafting items and turning these into what we call request for resources from the factions or RFRs, and you're earning Atlas as you go out and collect and craft and navigate around this map. And where the, the complexity comes in is in your particular um, gameplay style and in the way that you start all the way down with how do you configure a fleet of ships to participate or or perform a particular function now you know a lot of different styles of ships or classifications of ships between logistics freighting shipping uh your combat ships your data runners to identify where these sdus are throughout the uh, this galaxy and across this map and then otherwise figuring out different logistical points around this map within your faction to craft uh, through a set of different processes, starting with raw resources all the way up to refined materials, uh, compounds, components, and then turning those into, you know, craftable items and consuming all of those resources. Now, I say all of this just to explain how the earnings model is working today. But in terms of updates, some of the very cool things that we have coming up is the conversion of uh, the the game into what we call star-based um, I really don't want to share any dates here just because I have, like I said, that big town hall tomorrow, but uh, star-based, we'll see the map change from having uh, pre-placement of all of the star bases that are fully leveled up to a pre-placement of star bases, but the player's objective is to level those up. And then the very next release after that, we introduce on-chain combat systems, so you'll actually be competing with other players, you'll be destroying star bases, you'll be constructing your own star bases from the ground up, protecting those, um, and otherwise capturing critical points around this map to lock down those valuable resources that exist. Um, and I'll just say one more thing, and this is outside of Sage, but one more thing that's really exciting that's up and coming, and I think, I know our community has a ton of uh, enthusiasm around, is the official release of our crew packs. So to date, um, all of the ships that you purchased kind of came pre-configured with crew members that, uh, in, in fact, if you buy ships now uh, up until a certain point, your ships will come with a certain level of components, configurable components on the ships, as well as crew members. At some point in the not-too-distant future, we cut that off. We actually start selling crew packs, and we have a whole unique model behind how you'll be able to uh, purchase these you know, essentially pack openings where you'll get a variety of different crew members of with different aptitudes and different rarity levels and otherwise be able to use those directly in your ships, again, in Unreal Engine or within Sage. So uh, again, let me, let me stop there. I, I've been running on for a while now, but I'm just super excited about this year ahead. Yeah, so no, for those who are you who are unfamiliar with more space MMO genres, now, one of the biggest games with real-world economics from back in the day was Ultima. Oh, wait. Ult yeah, Ultima Online. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Ultima? Wait, am I? 
Yeah, I think so. That's the name. But anyways, this game has traded over millions of dollars in assets. Now, I personally never played the game. I was, I'm too young for that. But um, that's really like, you know, kind of the fundamental base of Star Atlas. Um, and, you know, essentially there's a lot of stuff to do in the game. There's a lot of ways to earn. It's not that simple. You know, you have to go in the game and actually figure it out, which I think is how games should be in the magic of the game. Um, no, I highly recommend anyone who's into the MMO genre, definitely check out what they're building. You know, this is the year of Solana. This is the year of Solana gaming. And, you know, I would not be sleeping on any Solana games. We're here to make sure people know about it. You know, a lot of people in the Web3 gaming space haven't been talking too much about Solana games. Well, they will be soon. So, anyways, we're going to move over back to BR1. You no, know, again, let's go over... I know you guys have this big launch coming. I definitely want to highlight that just for everyone. Um, also, just highlight some you no know, other things. You no know, airdrops. You no, know, is there going to be an airdrop or anything? Things of that sort that maybe we should all know about. On the BR1 front, if you've been a holder, then you would know we've always rewarded you. When we launched back in 2022, we released our ape operatives, our first characters in the game. And if you held those ape operatives, we airdropped you a droid operative. So as long as you've been holding, we gave you our next collection at no cost to yourself. And once again, if you've been holding an ape and a droid, come early March, we are going to release the information on our upcoming airdrop. For those of you that have seen the updates in our Discord, you would know that, very simply put, one ape plus one droid will enable you to claim a BR1 loot box over one staking epoch. So with the release of, of staking and renting, they basically function the same way you stake your operatives in the rental pool. In addition to your passive income that you'll generate in USD based on the use of those operatives, you also generate an epoch reward. If you keep your operatives staked in the rental pool for an extended period, at the end of that period, you could claim these loot boxes, which is really exciting and very easy way to reward our holders, incentivize them to participate in the rental system, and similarly, continue to drive the value of our, our associated collections. When it comes to the BR1 Infinite Operatives, you'll notice less than 3% of our NFTs are available on the, the open market. Sorry, wait, what did you say on the last end? I, I rugged for a second. There's only 3% of BR1 NFTs actually available on the open market. So our, our NFT collections are, are fairly tightly held. And... You know, Again, really excited for our upcoming Mint on March 7th, which is our, our weapon collection. We anticipate they'll be equally tightly held because they have so much value when it comes to those associated rental functions. Our BR1 loot box is the, the weapon collection, as mentioned, and each box opens to reveal three BR1 NFTs. Got it, yeah. So, you know, these guys, honestly, like, you know, Evan from BR1, they've really been rewarding holders, just like pretty much everyone actually out here on the space. You know, that's what Solana Gaming does. You know, we reward our holders well. Um, and, yeah, you know, hold an NFT, get some airdrop of token, uh, of weapons, and, um, you know, maybe token in the future. I don't know, maybe. Um, but we, we will see on that end. Now, Trance from DJ Legends just told me that uh, he is giving away some NFTs to people who like retweet the space. So, um, you know, shout out to, to Trans for doing that. You know, be sure to like and retweet the space, guys. If you haven't, let's get some more people in. You know, Solana Gaming is on the rise. Like, I'm telling you guys, this, like, everyone, people, people have been sleeping for way too long. Um, but okay, so Pavel, Pavel, um, you know, when you cut off, the last thing I was asking you about Mick Mob was, you know, I, I really like the model that Photo Finish is using, for example, of um, doing some basically stimulus for people who are racing Mix Mob as a, you know, a, um, as a benefit just for, you know, acquiring more users, getting people to learn the game, to try it out because... Now, with these wager to earn models, I think some sometimes, you know, when you're just starting out, it can be a little intimidating on yourself, right? Like, it's it's like, okay, I don't know if I really want to be, you know, playing for money here. Um, but, you know, if I'm getting a nice stimulus, um, you know, we might, might be able to bring in um, some more 
you know, users and sub whatnot. Is that something Mixmob is uh, planning on doing or looking into? Oh, it's, I mean, it's been there from, like, as you know, uh, Paintboy, we, every three, four months, we're releasing a new version of the product just so we can get the balancing down, what users want, where they're having trouble. So we do have that free-to-play version where just with an email, anybody. So what we found was it wasn't just wallets. Like, people, it wasn't, even with the uh, we're aiming at crypto natives. What we found out was in our targeting, we're getting a drop off at sign up about a year ago. And what we realized that even if you're a crypto native, you don't want to attach your wallet right away to it because it's something new. It's a new product. So you're like, yeah, I don't know. So that's why we introduced that. Hey, sign, set up an email and a new wallet will be created just for that. And players actually like that. So that appealed not just to crypto natives, but new people who just want to try the product. Um, because at Solana, you can like take care of all the gas fees, and so they get a Solana wallet address built into it, and they can start playing and earning uh, our in-game currency, which is suds. So they get a use of this, like, okay, this is how it works, I'm racing some games, getting it, and then from that, it's like, hey, if you want to really compete and have some fun, let's go to the pay arena. So that that helped a lot, uh, that is helping a lot, and then the other one, Simon, uh, you know, the game director, my co-founder, he they introduced in the design team was uh, these sticker pack kind of ba- progression things like battle passes and people are just earning stickers for free just competing doing different things and what we found is people actually like completing all those packages like their sticker book and in our discord people will actually be trading and this combo is going to trade stickers because they want certain ones to complete their packs so it was, a, it was definitely what you said is a way to not make it so intimidating where you can still have a lot of fun and once you get used to it and you understand the card, you're like, hey, you know what? Let me give a shot at these pay arenas, and let's go for that. Got it. Yeah, I mean, so you guys do have a, a pretty robust free-to-play version, which I, I really like. You know, I, I only play the free-to-play version personally because uh, I'm tired of getting wrecked by the experts out here, you know, like 64 and some of these other some of these other kids. Um, but, yeah, anyways... Guys, you know, Mixmob has, again, everyone's been rewarding their holders. They literally minted out their mix bots, so congratulations to that. And then airdropped you even more money than the mint costs while you still hold your NFT. You know, that, that was a big win. You no, know, thank you for that. You know, I was, I was really happy. Um, but, okay, yeah, so wanted to run it back over to Ian. Ian, um, just as so some final updates from photo finish. You know, I recently did, well, I was scrolling through a TL and I saw you guys were, you know, releasing something potentially in the future, like 16 long furlong races is what I saw from what I remember. I was barely scrolling through. I was like, wait a second, 16 furlongs. That, that's, that seems quite a bit. Yeah. So you want to run us through, you know, essentially what you guys are cooking. Cause you guys are clearly cooking a lot, but apparently you guys are cooking <laughs> even more. So yeah, we're, we're not doing 16 furlong races anytime soon. We've talked about that. Like the, I think that was sort of the, um, the the recent post that I put out was just sort of how crazy it is when you go back and look at our initial roadmap video, which was you know me twenty pounds ago and a lot less bags under my eyes uh, two and a half years ago talking about what photo finish is going to become before we had even really started work on it and it's just kind of crazy how um, it is exactly what we said we we're going to build. Now there are a couple things like 12 furlongs is what we chose as a maximum instead of 16. So that, that was sort of the one thing that is a little bit different. I think we don't have snow as well. Uh, that was in the pitch. So a couple of things we still got to get to that aren't done yet, but no, I mean, I think the, the things that are uh, cooking for us, you know, you look at sort of the, the, the latter half of last year was really validating that we had product market fit, that we had a game that people wanted to play and that our economy worked, you know, that, that, that was the sort of soft launch almost, um, and seeing if it would work. And, and I think it was very rocky and, and difficult, but like it proved that the community that we had built, the players that were playing were so hardcore and loved it. And really, you know, we're getting into it at, at sort of unbelievable rates and, you know, this really, really sticky product, you know, the highest retaining game I've ever seen in my life. And, and so it was just like, all right, we've got it now. So towards the end of the year, it was really turning our eye into things like security and compliance, uh, starting to hire external firms to do code audits. 
just really trying to button everything up. Because again, if you looked at the previous year, it was somewhat coming out of beta. You know, we're trying to move fast. We're trying to do things, you know, it's risky, it's scary, but also sometimes you got to do that. And, um, you know, how close you feel uh, with, with your risk profile to launching something and feeling like it's not done, but that it's ready to go out. So now you're looking at, okay, well, we feel a lot more confident in the product. And now we're scaling on all three of those sort of, uh, er or both of those areas, so security and compliance, and then we're scaling on growth. And so, um, as I said, we're, we're digging harder into security, we're digging harder into compliance, and when I mean compliance, I mean getting licensed in other territories. You know, this game right now is really only geo-locked to 37 U.S. states that consider it a skill-based game. And so, we're cons you know, we're in the process now of going you know, country by country to get license that we think is important. So the UK, Australia, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you know, trying to build more and more of an audience in these territories that we know this game resonates with. And so that's a big part of the compliance and it's a big part of cost and time, you know, is like getting licensed and expanding internationally. Um, but then outside of that, the growth part, I mean, it's really been about uh, empowering community, empowering uh, influencers, you know, signing with people that we think are going to stick with us for the long haul. So signing with Alex Becker, uh, speaking with Ansem and the crew like that, try, trying to get some of these bigger names that, that you know, I think so, some of them are polarizing. I mean, I'm not going to obviously, a lot of people hate Becker, a lot of people love Becker, but like, it's really, we know that our game stands on its own and it's not a shill bullshit that we're going to go try and get. We're trying to get really authentic um, people to help us market. I mean, it's really it. And so we have, you know, working with, with uh, the KOLs, uh, we've got coming up basically um, referral programs. So players that are referring other players are able to basically, you know, earn off of that from bringing, bringing people in. So that's obviously a huge growth lever and an engine that we'll be turning on. And then along with that is loans. And that's another big growth engine aspect as well. Uh, and all of those are coming pretty soon. I mean, within the next, you know, call it month or so, all of these things are kind of coming online. Uh, so I think there's a lot of great catalysts coming. Now, loans is a scary one because um, it, it changes a lot of dynamics of the market. So we're actually going really slow on that. And making sure that we don't like screw up something major, and and the core of it basically to start is to help syndicates run their stable to you know together. That's how it will kind of work at the beginning. It's basically a private loan, and you're saying um, if I see Aaron or someone that's you know running a syndicate in the audience from D Gods and D Stables, you know he's saying like okay, well I I hold the keys, but I'm going to send all the horses to this guy because he's the one managing it, and that's kind of a loan. So so we're basically trying to build out things like that to help really kickstart and continue the growth curve. And, it, and you can see it's already kicking up. And the great part of the tokenomics of the game are really, you know, that the crown has such real utility uh, as being a part of an ownership, you know, staking platform that you end up with players really um, plowing into crown. Then they're excited and they plow into a horse and then now they're racing which is increasing the racing entry fees for everyone. And it just, it's, it's really circular. And, you know, I hate saying the flywheel, but it, but it does. They, they do feed off of each other really well. And uh, I think that's why you're seeing what's, what's been happening in the last, you know, month, two months is really just that design coming to fruition with a larger mass of people. Yo, I love it. So basically, guys, they have a lot of good stuff cooking. They have loans. I think that's like basically rentals in a way. Um, of their horses out, which, you know, something that personally, DJ and Legends, I, we are looking for someone to also help manage the stable. Um, so, you know, when that comes out, you know, feel free to reach out if you guys are interested. Um, and, you know, I, I would love to highlight one magical theme about the photo finish economy. Also, same with Mix Mob, right? So, Crown um, and MXM token, one thing that these guys are doing that's just super unique is that they're essentially decentralizing the ownership of their game. So, you know, one reason why Crown, I think MXM will also catch on the same way is that, you know, instead of, you know, Ian and the photo finish team just be like, hey guys, we take everything, we take 100% of all your money. They're like, hey, how about we give out our token? And by having the token, you can stake Crown for a percentage for all the racetracks and essentially what that makes you is a game developer without actually having to de develop the game you know you basically become a part owner of the game and people are definitely cashing on that's why people have been you know loving crown 
people are onboarding a flow fish. It also just creates a really strong community environment where now all of us are owners of the game. Now we're all always going to be talking about the game because you now we're, we're also owners we're, uh, of, of what's going on. So yeah, shout out to them. Um, and I would like to highlight everyone again. If you guys are here in Solana, if you guys are into Web3 Gaming, be sure to follow each and one of these great founders out here. I mean, we have Star Atlas, the space MMO RPG that's really trying to do something actually like the most unique space MMO in the space. Um, shout out to them. We got BR1, the kill to spawn. Wait, kill, spawn? Wait, pay to spawn. <laughs> Pay to Spawn kills their earn model is an FPS game, guys. We have Mixed Mom, the strategy racing game. And we have Photo Finish, um, the horse strategy racing game. So we have a little bit out here for everyone. You know, whatever floats your boat in terms of gaming. You know, not everyone likes every single type of game, but you know, we have a wide variety. So definitely give everyone a follow out here. Um, and yeah, you know, in terms of the founders panel, guys, um, we'd like to... No, essentially just, you know, appreciate the founder's time. Don't want to take up too much of the time. You guys can leave or, you know, answer questions from others at any time. Now we have, you know, people who want to come up, experts panel. And, yeah, essentially we like to we like to dive in deeper with, you know, people who are just deep in the game, people playing the game. And you know, I want to highlight Valacy, our boy from DJ Legends. This guy is deep into Star Atlas, you know, Valacy, you know, what are your experiences over in Star Atlas in terms of playing the game, earning, you know, what there is to do, so on and so forth? Hey, hello, everyone. As I can say for Star Atlas, robust economy, amazing flying mechanics within, like, Unreal Engine 5. Uh, the racing seems like it will be also, like, really highly skill-based as well. Um, yeah, I see a bright future for Star Atlas, as in purchasing what ships and managing, like, your different uh like crews pretty much to get together your fleets um start joining these communities and stuff uh we've actually so we're kind of partnering or joining the unseen so uh yeah we're just kind of grouping up with them and we're going to be doing a lot of pirating i guess later on when the game releases so looking really forward to that but as in the earning potential of star atlas atlas is pretty good um i see a high potential to increase that as it progresses and goes towards more of a uh, actual game coming out and the full release of it but getting your ships and things now i would say is ideal for the crew packs and stuff as they've announced that as well it's gonna be from what i'm understanding it's gonna be a very crucial part um to start out this in the actual game that's uh gonna be playing here but yeah well we i have labs actually open up my, on one of my screens here it's just doing it's, the, it's a little thing over here and so yeah it's a pretty robust economy it's interesting the crafting and everything it's uh, fully integrated everything pretty much so one thing valacy i want to ask you um you know we're in web3 so you know people like to make money out here so you know if you were to ape into a one star atlas asset right now just so people can get set up and start making some money in the game which one would it be um, I could suggest maybe going, like, if you just want to test it out, test, like, maybe labs, per se, you can start doing, like, SDUs, maybe grab, like, a Fimble bike, like, the, one of the cheaper options, or if you want to spend a little bit more so your scanner can stay out there for a little bit longer, uh, you can use, uh, go up to, like, the extra small, small, and medium, uh, crafts, and then there's a lot of different ones, but there's a website i think it's like a spanish guild or something that pretty much set it up and it has all like the the fuel the uh, cargo capacity and everything on the ships so there's like some there's a lot of different like information out there pretty much what you can go for but yeah just start purchasing one of the smaller ships if you want and start scanning if you want your miners uh key thing is like there's specific um ships for mining and if you get those ones you don't have to spend ammo to mine but if you mine with anything else you can mine with pretty much any other ship it does cost ammo and food as well so where the regular mining is just food so that's probably the best yeah, so I mean, yeah. 
definitely a lot that goes into this stuff, guys. And, you know, I think with a lot of games, and this is kind of how it should be, it, it, it will be overwhelming at the start. But, you know, luckily we do have Valacy here, the expert. So if you guys have any questions about Star Atlas, um, you know, feel free to drop in the DJ Legends Discord. You know, Valacy will help you out. You know, we're here to onboard the masses to Web3 Gaming. Um, and, you know, Star Atlas... People, are, people, I think, socially have been sleeping on it, but that's not going to be for long. No, I'll be personally making a post on Star Atlas myself. Um, now, let's see. So we also have 64 World up here, the resident mix mob expert. No, 64, you want to you dive into your experience of mix mob and you know, why you like the game so much? Because I think you played in probably the most hours um, out of anyone. I know. Absolutely. What's going on, everyone? Um, bro. So basically, Mixed Mob was one of the first Solana games I got like heavy, heavy into, and it, like it really came down to three things for me. So it's very hard to find a team that not just delivers but consistently over delivers in like year after year. The game itself is, in, bro. I see both of down there. We would sit in, <laughs> we would sit in Discord VC till like six a.m. just racing non-stop um in the paid race is trying to earn stickers the game is top of the blast it has like shifting meta all the time they're consistently updating it and then um the community the community behind mix mob is like bar none they have like i see they have so much characters for the community you have beef who is down there he's loved by literally Everybody who plays the game. You have Datacore, he's a racing legend within Mixed Mob. Eureka, loved by absolutely everybody. Helps people he's racing consistently. The game is thriving in the sense that their their daily active users are consistently growing. Um so you know, having those three combinations as somebody who like makes a living playing web three games, um Finding a team that consistently delivers on time, so we over delivers. Finding a team that has fun gameplay, fun mechanics, shifting meta consistently, um, and a community that's insanely welcoming. It's super solid community. It's a it's a hard combo to find, especially in this space. <laughs> yeah. So I I do have a question you now, and. Um, you know, obviously with Mixmob, I would say for those who want to get involved as more of an investor, um, buy the Amex M token is similar to a crown token for photo finish. You own a percent of all the racetracks and you get money from people racing. Um, now, you know, what about like the mix bots and um, now what about the mix bots? Like, what, what do those Bro, do? The bots are literally on sale right now. Like the bot, the price, the the price of bots right now is incredible. Um, and the the masks as well. So you can um you can grab a mask and a bot and bro. Uh, I'm trying to see right real quick what the what the prices are for the bots. Um, but they're they're a tenth of what they were at one point, and they're consistently going back up. But um, yeah, some of the, some of the one by one bots that were dropped are. Absolutely insane, though. What, what, but what, what do the bots give you, like, a bonus in the game in any sense, or is it just a skin? Um, so, I don't... Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure if it gives you a bonus in the game. I don't recall uh, any of it. Pavel, it's Pavel Slipic, or NB for anyone. I don't believe that it does... I think it's just a skin, but... Um, yeah, I could be wrong on that. I already double checked that. Okay. Yeah. And my might come out, I think, I've heard, I feel like I've heard on the street that's supposed to do something. Maybe it's coming out in a future release. But okay, you know, cool. You know, Mixed Mob is definitely one of our favorite games as well. Um, you know, we've really been cooking out there. Got, got a few people who've put in a ton of hours. Now, uh, we don't have necessarily a, um, BR, BR1 expert or photo finish expert, although I see a lot of experts in the audience. So if anyone wants to come up, give their experience. Um, otherwise, you know, in terms of photo finish, guys, and um, getting in, I think, you know, for most people who just want to be an investor, again, guys, buy Crown. Like, 
you, you're literally an owner of the game by buying Crown, and that's what I love about these games and Web3, right? It's really within the Web3 ethos to start sharing the profits with everyone. Um, and again, yeah, that's decentralizing your ownership, essentially. Um, yeah, Pavel, do you have uh, anything to say as well? Pavel? Damn, I hope Pavel didn't get rugged again. Pavel, I see your hand up, though. I do see well, your hand up. All right. Do you want it? You got Aaron up here. We got all right. Some hey, all right. Here. Let's talk about something. Oh, all right, guys. We got a special guest. I would consider him a super photo finish expert. Aaron from D Gods. No, Let's go. It's full in, in all of. Photo finish. They literally have a racetrack named after them. That's how big they are. So, you know, Aaron, you want you want to just dive in, give us your experiences of photo finish, your story here, and you know anything else that we should know. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Um, D stables on top, of course. Um, it, it really just started as as a fun community thing inside of D Gods. I I saw photo finish minting. I thought it was going to be pretty cool. So then I convinced a bunch of my uh, my friends to to go in with me, and now ever since, I mean, it has just been the most fun ever. We have a bunch of horses. You mentioned we do have a racetrack now, so that's been fun, and and we're going to continue to do way cooler things on that into the future. Um, but in all reality, it's just been really fun to to kind of build our own little community around owning and and cheering on all of our horses. Um, so it's been it's been great. The economy in the game is is wild. Um, in my opinion, it's it's one of the best kind of token based economies I've ever you know interacted with. Um, and I know a, a couple other people were up here talking about earning potential. You know, there's definitely some some potential in photo finish. D Stables has uh, has secured some of that potential. It's it's been a good few months. Um, but it's also just not too late. And that's one of the really cool parts about the way that the game is built is that, you know, you can kind of join at any time in the lifetime of the game and you're still going to be competing. You're still going to be having fun, hopefully winning and uh and working your way up. But yeah, it's just been a great time and we had Ian on a space a, a couple days ago, which was a ton of fun. Um so yeah, I can't get enough honestly of photo finish. Always happy to talk about it. Yo, I mean, yeah, so am I, guys, like, and again, I'm definitely going to show my own video up here of the intro to Photo Finish, guys. You know, it's actually not today. It's actually the perfect time to get in because you can get paid to play. Um, and I do highlight a few things in the video. I think one of my favorite mechanics of the game is that your, your horse is aged, like, in real life, especially if you have a super cracked OP horse that's just wrecking everyone, well... You know, too bad that he's going to have to get too old and retire at some point. And that's what really keeps the game going. And also to me, why, you know, it's never really too late to get in because, you know, the best horses will eventually have to retire, you know, giving uh, opportunity for new new horses to come in. So, uh, yeah, 64, do you have a question? No, no, I just want to touch up on one thing. The more I thought about it, so, like, by owning a mixed bot, you do get total access to all of their arenas. You get exclusive rewards. Um, and the mixed bots have factions to them. And now the factions, there's like going to be a ton more coming out about the factions, but they have like a huge, uh, they have a huge effect in the game. And it's going to be a big thing coming, you know, like the faction wars and stuff. So there is a lot of benefit outside of just like owning it to owning a mixed bot. The more I kind of thought about it, therefore, I just wanted to add that in. Yo, dope. So, anyways, guys, um, I do have to run in a little bit, but I I, ha I wanted to highlight a few things. So, first, no, in Star Atlas, guys, um, no, things you can buy, ships, you can also buy, you know, the tokens as well. But, you know, Valacy says the ships are the best because you can make tokens. We have BR1 out here. You know, things you can really buy out here are the NFTs as they're doing a future airdrop So. Definitely check them out. Um, photo finish. And photo finish, you can buy Crown, obviously. I think I've, I might as well be a dead horse talking right now. I've said it so many times, but buy Crown. Buy Crown. Um, I want to, yeah. let, let's highlight, there's two other uh, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we got, uh, we got, um, 
Shoot, that Corey from Mixed Mob from Honeyland. Buy MX Cooper. Desert, guys. So those are the assets you guys can buy. Otherwise, you know, in terms of not buying, you can check out the game. But yeah, no, as Chance was saying, we do have a lot of other special guests up here. We have Corey from Honeyland. No, definitely someone I want to bring up for our next Solana gaming space. Now, what's good, Corey? Um, haven't really been following Honeyland as much, to be honest. That I'm a little ashamed uh, of this. But, no, you know, tell us what's going on with Honeyland, uh, about your game, and what's been cooking, because now I appreciate you coming up. <laughs> what's up, guys? I just saw the, uh, the mega space. I had to jump up. I saw so many people that I just love and uh, respect in this space. Uh, some of literally my favorite projects in this whole thing with Star Atlas and BR1 and Mix Mob and uh, Photo Finish and um so it's it's uh degen legends obviously of course so uh it's just really really cool to be up here but uh i don't know i mean yeah i don't want to i don't want to steal this in any way but yeah honeyland uh you know we're, we're different than most of these games and just that uh more of like a strategy resource management casual mobile game um i think we've really tried to build you know it sounds like a lot of what you're promoting here is like where's the real investment and i think what makes all these projects special is that um all of them have been incredibly well thought out from the game economy to allow for sustainability. So whether you're investing in the token or the NFTs um, or, or whatever assets are available, that you can have a ton of fun playing, uh, but you can also earn through this, but it has to be done through a really, really well-built economy. And I think that's where uh, all these projects in this space have just done an incredible job with that. And so, um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to, to pop up here and, and say hi and uh, see a bunch of my friends up here and uh, wanted to, to do that. So that's about it, but I appreciate it. Yeah, so, uh, Corey, I do have a question, though. Um, you know, in Honeyland, like, obviously, yeah, you guys have a great game. And again, again guys, you know, these these games that we're promoting, you know, there's no Ponzi novice here. This, these are all well, very well thought out um, gaming economies, as Corey said, which is why we love promoting them. If, it, if we think it's a Ponzi, we'll tell you. Okay, well, we'll tell you if we think it's a Ponzi. They got that Ponzi novice running. Now, Corey, though, what should we buy for Honeyland? So, um, I like to think of all of our, so I'll, I'll break this down in three ways. Uh, the Genesis collection is the thing that I intend to have the most value from like the NFT side over time. Um, I, my, my long-term vision for this is that it can become kind of like what the saga Genesis pass became, where it becomes this like access token to other projects and other airdrops and other things that if Honeyland does what I want Honeyland to do, it becomes a major player in the ecosystem and the Genesis collection is where you know we've got 140,000 NFTs in our ecosystem right now. Those will continue to grow over time. Uh, but the Genesis is a fixed supply collection. That's one that I think will cont continue to carry more demand. So they have utility in the game, but the the what they cost is not the best uh, like return on investment purely for playing the game. It's if you believe in Honeyland becoming a bigger thing and that Genesis becoming something significant, which is uh, a, a big goal of mine. The all of the bees in the game right now, we, we ca I call them asset earning assets, right? So you go purchase an asset, and the goal is that those bees can go out and find HXD in the ecosystem. You can, with that, H they can find items in the ecosystem. And so, um, in, in Honeyland, as you're sending them out on missions, and so those are bringing back items every single time you're sending them on a mission. And so, if you're somebody who actively plays, um, you're keeping your bees busy, as I like to say, um, those things are going to earn you a bunch. And uh, as the ecosystem grows and you earn, you know, you can get strengthened and grow your colony of bees. And so I think of those as not like if you want NFT floor value to, to, to pump, those are not for that. But what they're going to do is help you go earn more assets in the game that should carry value. But at the core of everything we're building, HXD is where the value lies. Um, we've tried to build it on incredibly sound tokenomics, um, give it a lot of utility inside of Honeyland. And uh, anybody who's kind of heard me, my vision is that it's not just Honeyland, but we are building an entire gaming ecosystem that HXD will be the fungible token that fuels the entire thing. And so I would say long term, where I'm trying to build the most value is through HXD. The bees in the collection are the tools that will help you go earn that HXD if you don't just want to go buy it, but you'd rather earn it through gameplay. And the Genesis is kind of the legacy collection that I really want to have carry a ton of value um, in more of a legacy uh, capacity over time. Yeah, I appreciate it. So basically, guys, now, buy HXD, buy the Genesis Pass. You guys want some exposure over to Honeyland. And again, guys, you know, we are here about the gameplay. We like to highlight all these different types of games. But this is Web3, so we also want to know what to buy just for everyone out here in the audience. You know, this is not really a shill. This is just like, hey, guys, if you want exposure to your game, what's the best way to get it? 
And, you know, shout out for Corey for coming up. You know, we definitely got to do another Solana gaming mega space with you, Corey. Got to bring up portals and all these other great games. Um, now, Bloomverse is up here. What, uh, what is up, Bloomverse? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? I'm sorry if you um, called on me a little earlier. I think I overheard that, but I actually started a Dota match while I was listening, so I was I spaced out there for a bit. But, yeah, I'd love to... Um, to hear these spaces, I also just saw the space and um, and wanted to come up here. I really appreciate you guys bringing me up here, and um, you know, all good, all good. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this is a real gamer out here. Bloomverse playing Dota while he's on the space, and I've done this before too myself. So, no, Bloomverse, uh, you want to tell us a little about a bit about Bloomverse? I'm actually not not familiar. Yes, for sure. I mean, we've been developing the game for about two years now, but haven't really been in the public space for for a long time because we've been, you know, focusing on the proof of concept. Um, so Bloomberg is mainly a, a smart game, as we like to call it, that uses blockchain and NFT technology to incorporate brands, online stores, and service providers into the core mechanics of the game. Uh, you know, the gamification, I've been an entrepreneur for about 20 years, and I'm also a gamer, obviously. Yukai Chow, the author of um, the Octolysis model, and uh, he's developed gamification for Google, Tesla, Boston Dynamics. So we're, we're pretty into the psychology of games and we believe that games especially for us adults they should give back to our lives right not just through the earning aspect of web3 style games but in different different ways that are more sustainable than just liquidity pools being funded by players and by that i mean that we bring brands like any we're partnered up with amazon already but the idea is to partner with as many brands as possible let's say that you're walking towards the arena to play a 2v2 or a 3v3 but you have the door dash challenge on the right the american express dungeon on the left you know the the adidas arena so all the we build video games mini games for brands and we incorporate them into the core mechanics of the game so when you're going through these lobbies that look like malls uh you basically can play side quest and earn you know delta sky miles american express points or Mar marriott rewards uh, all while you're just leveling up and, and skilling and skilling yourself or developing skill in the game so the core game though uh, is kind of like an overwatch meets fortnite meets dota kind of style where you just use nfts it's free to play your account is not an, uh, an nft but as you get more competitive your boots are digital asset your your pants your armor your weapons so the bigger your collection the more strategic you can get so that's just a little bit of it. You know, we the tokenomics are also pretty fun. We ha have a s several senior members, ex-senior members from Star Atlas on the team, the ex-game economy director, Steven Saval, the ex-head of growth, Matei Mavic. So, yeah, doing a lot, man. Definitely staying busy. So, and, you know, just, just to make sure, your game is on Solana, right? Yes, yes, we are. We're actually partnering up with uh, Solana Labs as well. So we're going to be using GameShift as our primary way, like port of entry, a GameShift account. So that's also going to be really fun because we're building it in a way that, um, that it's meant for everybody, right? Sure, right now it's a Web3 audience that we're catering to, but we'll be, we're building a smart game that's just meant for everybody. So even if you don't know what a wallet is, you don't know how to navigate yourself to Web3, you're going to come into Bloomberg's login, create an account, just like any other game, you won't even notice that you have a, a that, you know, your assets are held in a wallet. That's also Lana Labs. Awesome. Well, yeah, you know, we got to bring you up for another Solana Gaming you space next time as well, Honeyland. Um, yeah, guys, but no, I appreciate all, all these goaded founders coming up. I mean, you guys have honestly done so much for the Solana space. You know, I think, uh, you know, Solana 2024 is really the year for Solana Gaming. You know, we are DJ Legends. This is Payne Boy hosting out here. I know we are a gaming brand here to onboard the masses to Web3 Gaming. We are built on Solana, so we will be focusing highly on Solana games. But, you know, we'll be linking up with the other Web3 games from other chains as well so that they can also come to Solana. Um, but, yeah, you know, thank you guys all for coming through. Uh, we have to run now. And, you know, just as a reminder for everyone, be sure to follow all these goaded guests up here. I mean, these guys are doing something really big, really special. Um, and, yeah. Till the next space, guys. You guys take care. Peace out.